Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm testing out the top four automatic drip coffee makers on Amazon to see how they work, see how they compare. So let's jump right into it in today's video. Let's first flash back to when I purchased these and then get started. All right, I've got the Amazon best-selling coffee machines. Number one, Mr. Coffee five cup mini brew switch coffee maker in black. Has Amazon's choice. Looks like a 4.5 star rating, 20 bucks. Looks pretty good, add it to cart. Number two is a cold brew coffee machine. I'm not doing those, so we'll skip that one. Number three, Black & Decker 12 cup. Let's check this one out. 34.99, more expensive. Um, it's got 41,000 ratings, 4.5 stars. Looks pretty nice, add to cart. Number four is a Keurig, so we're not doing that one. Uh, number five is a toaster. Why is it a toaster in the top five coffee machines? So that means the next up will be another Mr. Coffee. Let's check this one out. $30.31, let me see here. 4.4 stars, 35,000 ratings, not too bad. Add to cart. All right, so number seven, it looks like a hybrid. We're not doing that one. That one's kind of in a category of its own, so that means Number eight on the chart, which is the number four of the drip type, would be the Cuisinart. It's number eight on the charts, but it's a number one bestseller. I don't know how that works, but 30,000 ratings. It's a 4.7, very impressive. Only one left in stock, $99. All right, here we go, 211 bucks. That's a lot of coffee makers. Good thing I like coffee. All right, so they've all been ordered. Now it's just a matter of waiting. I'm kind of dispensing with the unboxing in this video, but let's go over a few features of each one of the units. All right, this is the baby of the bunch. This is the five cup Mr. Coffee, although it's the number one bestseller on Amazon. 650 watts, it has a five cup carafe. It has a heating plate, a water level window indicator. It's not programmable and there's no auto shut off. Here is the Black & Decker, a 12 cup coffee pot. 975 watts. It also has a window indicator for the water level. It is programmable and there's an auto shut off of two hours. Let's take a look at the 12 cup Mr. Coffee here. This one is 900 watts. Once again, it has the pause and serve feature, heating plate. This one has a auto level window on not just one side, but both sides. It is not programmable and there's no auto shut off. Here's the Cuisinart. This one is 1,025 watts, 12 cup capacity. Heating plate, auto shut off from zero to four hours. Self-cleaning mode, also a programmable heating plate from low to high. There is no window on the outside to show the water level, although there is one inside, which is not particularly easy to see. You're kind of required to look down there and see the water level. There's a filter here that's replaceable after about 60 days. This one uses a reusable mesh basket, or you can use a number four paper filter. All right, so let's get to the test following, shall we? Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that take coffee very seriously. They're gonna wish I had done certain tests, but this is what I came up with. Hopefully these tests are of some use to you. So for my first test, I filled them all to capacity and just made a full pot of coffee in each one. And my hope was to get three pieces of information from that particular test. First up, around halfway through the brewing cycle, I decided to put the thermometer in the top to see about what the temperature was coming out of the shower. Now, that's not the most accurate test because there's grounds in there. The water's kind of coming out in bursts. So maybe it isn't the most accurate test, but in the grand scheme of things, it actually might be pretty helpful. The next piece of information I wanted was just how long does it take to make a pot of coffee? The third and final piece of information I hope to get from this test was a final temperature reading as soon as the pot of coffee was done. I did one more test in the Cuisinart because it's the only one with an adjustable heating plate. So I wanted to see what the difference was on that one between low and high. So let's get right to test number one. Line the filter basket with a standard basket style paper coffee filter. I'm a little surprised it would go with these instead of a smaller kind, but that's what it says. One, two. And then there we go. I think we're ready. Not rocket science, but here we go. And start. We'll see how long it takes and I'll measure the temperature and see how, uh, how warm it gets. All right, we're at four and a half minutes. It's at three cups now. Let's see what kind of temperatures we're getting for the uh, inside the coffee maker here. I'm getting about 185 degrees-ish, so 100, 186. Hidden into the carafe, it's about 180 degrees. All right, and we just I just heard the click, so that means it went off just under six minutes. Let's take a quick reading directly inside the coffee pot itself. I would say it's pretty solidly 171 degrees. All right, so that's our benchmark for the number one selling coffee maker on Amazon. Let's move on to the number two coffee maker and see how that does. All right, let's try the number two coffee maker, see how this goes. All 
and we're off. All right, we're about six cups, which is supposedly about halfway through. Let's take the temperature and see how it looks. Here's what we got inside. We're about, oh, 180, 181. I cannot go into the carafe because these are actually touching, so there's no way to get in between there. So I have to wait till it's done to measure directly in the pot itself. And that's about it. So we got about 1111 11 for 12 cups. 172 degrees on the nose. Time for the number three coffee maker on Amazon, the second Mr. Coffee of the bunch. Let's try it out. 12 scoops in there and close it up. The lid doesn't feel like it wants to close all the way. Everything is uh, in place, but it just doesn't feel like it wants to close all the way. Well, maybe not a big deal, I guess. There we go. And we're off. I'm already seeing activity after less than 30 seconds. So it starts, it starts very quickly. All right, we're approaching the six cup mark. So let's take a peek at the temperature here. That's what we got in there. It's like 181. I just heard the unit stop. So let's see what we got here. Very slightly cooler than some of the others, 169.1. And there it is. All right, setting this to brew. I uh, get this set right to medium and we're gonna hit the switch. All right, coffee started dripping out very quickly, very quickly, like 20 seconds. Maybe the fastest of the bunch. All right, we're about at the six cup mark. Let's try a little test of the temperature. It's gonna be kind of difficult, but let's see. I'm seeing 185, 187. It's, it's warm, it's nice and hot. I would say this is the hottest of the four so far. It has just switched off. The 909 mark. Let's take the temperature. All right, so this is uh, just under 173. All right, let's turn this down to low. I'll come back in about a half an hour and we'll see how it looks then. All right, it's been about a half an hour. Let's check it out. All right, this is on low. It doesn't seem much different. Um, 173. Crank this up to high. I'll come back in another half hour and see how it looks then. All right, we're about 30 minutes. Let's check it on high and see how it looks. Oh, it is warmer. It is warmer. 181. It did go up on high. So the high setting is higher. All right. So looking at the final results of test number one, the numbers that really jump out at me are the Mr. Coffee 12 cup. That one was colder than the others at the completion of the test and also the Cuisinart. Even though it was a small margin, I think that one was faster and hotter than the rest of the bunch. All right. We got a long way to go. Let's go into test number two. Now for this one, I want to test out a feature they all have where you can start your brewing cycle, remove the pot part of the way through, pour a cup, put it back in there and the broom resumes. They all have different names for this feature. Mr. Coffee calls it grab a cup on Amazon, but in the instructions, they call it pause and serve. Black and Decker calls it sneak a cup. I guess it's sneaky by doing that. And then the Cuisinart has the more elegant brew pause. I think the Cuisinart and the Black and Decker actually have those names trademarked. So I loaded all the coffee pots with five cups of coffee. That's about two full coffee mugs full of coffee. So what I wanted to do was start the brewing cycle about halfway through, pour a cup of coffee, take the temperature of that, finish the brewing cycle and then take a temperature of the second cup that it makes. My thinking was that the second cup might be warmer than the first and I was right. All right, we're at the two cup mark. Let's try the pause and serve. Let's see what happens. We got two drops, two drops, not bad. So the first cup is not nearly as warm as it will be as when it's finished brewing. All right, at 5.52 it just stopped. Let's measure this one out now. Cup number two is significantly warmer than cup number one. Very interesting. How's it going? You know, the taste portion of this video is going to be kind of difficult because there's so many factors and it's such a subjective thing. The kind of roast you use, the types of grounds, even the types of water you use. The strength, it's, it's, the taste is going to be difficult to really judge objectively. But with that said, this first cup I had from the Mr. Coffee 5 cup is perfect. I, I think that it did a nice job. It's very, I like the simplicity of this machine. And of course, there's a plane flying over as soon as I, I hit record on the camera. The first cup on, on the Mr. Coffee was much cooler than the second cup. But as far as the pause and go or grab or whatever the name, they all have different names for it. But as far as that feature goes, you are able to pull your carafe out of there without making a big mess, pouring a cup and putting it back in there. So let's see how the rest of them do. 
Okay, we're about at the two cup mark. Let's try their sneak a cup feature. Oh, no drops. Very impressive. No drops. I'm going to kind of stir it with the thermometer here. Let's see. So in the 150s, 152. All right, it has just stopped a little bit quicker, 444. Let's see how hot the second cup is now. Second cup, much hotter. Look at that. Wow. Much hotter than the first cup. Current time is 8.55 a.m. The current temperature, 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Or for my friends overseas, it'll be 33 degrees for you. So nothing beats a nice warm cup of coffee on a blazing hot morning. Now, I really don't expect there to be a great variety of taste because they all use the same method for brewing coffee. At this point, I'm kind of just looking for any problems or any significant differences between these. So right now, between the first two, I would say the biggest difference is the Black & Decker's first cup was warmer than the Mr. Coffee's first cup. I got more stuff to do this morning. I'm going to keep drinking my coffee. I usually have one cup in the morning. I'm going to have four today. But let's see how the other two do before we make any final conclusions. Five scoops. Let's do it. Looks like we're right here, which is probably about the two cup mark. Let's see what happens. We had three, four drops come out. Kind of stir a little bit. A brisk 150. All right, it is done at the 445 mark. It's warmer than the first cup, but I've seen warmer second cups already. All right, cup number three, let's see what we got. Oh, well, it's a perfectly fine cup of coffee, as the others have been as well. This is cup number three. I got one more to go. All right, we're set up for five cups. Set to high. We're going on. Stopwatch is on. All right, let's try it and see how the first cup goes. Time for the brew pause. One drop, not bad. And let's see what we got. You know, like a 140, 50, 149, 150? Not particularly warm. All right, it just stopped at the 416 mark. Let's see what we got for the second cup here. Much warm, much warmer. I'm seeing one, it's from 160s to 170s. <sighs> cup number four, right before lunch. There's a difference in temperature and there's a difference in some of the bells and whistles and the functions, but the final product, there isn't much difference. I don't even know if I can tell a difference between all four of these cups or not. All right, so looking over the results of round two, I think the Black & Decker impressed me the most of this one. It only had one small drop that I didn't even notice at first, and both cups were the warmest of each round. The Cuisinart did well too. It only had one drop, and it was the fastest. My third and final test is one of the heating plate. It's a feature they all have. It supposedly keeps the coffee warm. So I brewed five cups in each one, let them sit for half an hour, and here's what happened. All right, for this test, I have them all loaded up for five cups. Five cups, five cups, five cups, five cups. The reason I'm doing five cups is because this one maxes out at five cups, so it just seems fair to have all of them do the same amount. After they're done with the brewing cycle, I'm just gonna leave them on there. They all have heating plates. We're gonna see after about a half an hour and see how the temperatures maintain by those heating plates. So here we go. Let's hope I don't overload my circuit again. Listen to the sound of all four coffee makers going at the same time. The Cuisinart is finished. It's hard to tell the exact moment it stopped because there's so much noise going on here. But that one is definitely done before the four and a half minute mark. The Mr. Coffee and the Black & Decker finished almost at the exact same time. So all of them are finished before the six minute mark. So let's reset that. Come back in 30 minutes and take temperatures of all these and see how well the heating plates actually work. And we're at the 30 minute mark. Let's take some temperatures and see how they turned out. We were at 193, 193. The 12 cup Mr. Coffee, 169, 168. Black & Decker, 180.5. And the five cup Mr. Coffee, about 181 on the nose. Clearly the Cuisinart, when you got it on the high mode, destroys the competition for keeping coffee hot. All right, so here, clearly the Cuisinart's adjustable temperature makes a big difference here. It kept the coffee nice and hot. It was literally 12 to 24 degrees warmer than the others. So there's clearly no contest. 
and keeping the coffee warm. In fact, it keeps it warmer than when it comes out of the pot in the first place. Now, taste-wise, there is not a huge difference between any of these coffee makers. Although, after using this for a while, I'd probably give the slight edge of the Cuisinart, which had a little bit smoother taste than the rest of them. But again, that's a pretty narrow margin. They all tasted fine. I didn't find grounds in the bottom of the pots of any of these. But again, if I had to pick a winner on taste, I'd go the Cuisinart. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of all four of these coffee makers. Let's go with the Five Cup Mr. Coffee, which is the number one bestseller. The pros for that one is that it's the most compact, it's very simple to use, it only has one button, and it was the cheapest of the bunch. It kind of also hung with the other full-size cheap models when, as far as the temperature test went. Now, as far as the cons goes, obviously it's too small if you're someone who makes a large pot of coffee on a regular basis. It calls for normal basket-type filters, but those seem a little bit large and awkward in there. It was the slowest of the bunch, and it's also not programmable. As far as the Black & Decker Pro, goes, I would say it won the Sneak a Cup contest. I do like it's nice, easy to read clock, unlike the Cuisinart, and it also, its programmable feature is pretty nice. As far as the cons of the Black & Decker goes, I would say the biggest con is that when making a full pot of coffee, it was the slowest of the bunch of the full-size units. I didn't really find a lot wrong with it, but it also didn't really stand out very much, aside from that Sneak a Cup test. All right, the Mr. Coffee 12 Cup Pros. One thing I really like about that one is the fact that it has the water level indicators on both sides. I like how simple that one is. One button on or off, very simple. It was also the cheapest of the full-size machines. It was also the fastest of the three cheaper machines when making a full pot. As far as the cons goes, it had the lowest temperature of all three tests, even below the five cup Mr. Coffee that's much smaller. I also don't like the fact that it's not programmable. Now, as far as the Cuisinart Pros goes, it has the most bells and whistles. It's the only one that comes with a reusable filter. It's the only one that has an adjustable heating plate. It seemed to brew the hottest and it seemed to brew the fastest. It has the charcoal filter which aids in taste. It's also just a very nice looking machine. Now, as far as the cons go, I think that the opening for the water reservoir isn't very big. I found myself sometimes getting water on the counter. I also don't like the fact that there's no water level indicator on the outside. You have to open it up and look down into it. That's not as efficient as the other machines have. The clock is unfortunately difficult to read, and this one, of course, is much more expensive than the others. Everyone has different requirements about what they're looking for in a coffee maker, how fast, how hot, how easy, or even how small it is. Hopefully this video helps you decide if you're in the market for a coffee maker. But if you've tried any of these, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.